Hey guys, I'm waiting uh, for my husband to pick me up from the shop because he has my car right now. So if I get interrupted in this video, I'll make a part two or something. I may still have to make a part two, but I thought it would be fine um, being the end of the year. And I have a lot of time on my hands right now, my hand right now. Um, I saw another artist do this on YouTube, Sandy Hester, who... I watch constantly. I adore her. Um, I saw her do this at end of year um, art supply favorites and I thought that would be a really fun thing to do because I use a lot of different types of art supplies and I can't stop buying art supplies because <laughs> I have to try everything. So if this helps somebody go like this is this stuff actually works and is actually good and all of that and then you know you can be a little more choosy about things than I am but I'm just gonna go ahead and get started I've just got a bunch of things out here I'm there might be a part two just because I might find more things go and go oh that should have been in that video so anywho and right now I have time to shoot videos because I'm not doing nails because of this injury right now I go tomorrow morning to um, hear about the results of my MRI and to do a nerve test and I'm hoping for really, really good news. I don't know what I'm expecting them to say, but <laughs> hopefully it's something that it's like, oh, we can fix that. We have, you know, snap our fingers and it's magic and you're good to go. I know that's probably not going to be the case, but I have high hopes, okay? So um, first thing, I have no categories here. I just put a bunch of stuff out here and gathered it up and went, I love this, I love this, I love this. So let's get to it. First thing. Um, my watercolor palette, um, I got the actual metal tin palette from Amazon, um, probably at least four or five years ago. Um, and I have all of my favorite travel watercolors it into here I keep my tins a mess that's just the way it is but um there's every brand you can think of in here high end low end um if I love it I'm using it um and I've got a bunch of stickers from travels um the sticker right here the big one that says Rhythmia that is actually a retreat a resort that I went to in Costa Rica a couple of years ago um, where I partook in ayahuasca ceremony and the shaman who was leading the ceremony actually blessed my palate. Um, so it's near and dear to my heart. I will never, ever, ever get rid of this. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Paint. <laughs> Here's some. This is Gaffrey Art Material heavy texture paint comes in bags like this like uh icing bags and you can actually use it in that same fashion like you're using icing it's very very thick very textured it's like my favorite thing in the whole wide world right now um i have if you were in the shop you'd know that there are many paintings i've used this with it comes in colors i get a lot of titanium white because i can mix other colors into it um, I can also paint over <laughs> this once it is dry. So my husband just pulled up, so I'm going to have to finish this video later. Okay, guys, I'm back. <laughs> it's the next day. Um, so I think where I was, oh, Gaffrey. So the texture, heavy texture um, paint would is awesome and um, oh yeah what I was saying is that I can do a piece with this paint and then use spray paint airbrush other coat paint other paints to paint that white again if I want to um, so I can use the titanium white as the texture and then use other colors to paint that or I can get their different colors from their company so they Gaffrey is amazing and I can't say enough good things about it. I really, really love it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 
And in that vein, I've been using palette knives with that texture paint. Um, like you can see some texture in this piece behind me. These are done um, with little palette knives, some big palette knives. And I have found some really big ones and I love the giant palette knives. So um, I just got this one Saturday, two days ago. Um, Dave and I took a, a trip to Cincinnati. Um, there is an art supply store there called, it escapes me at the moment. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, the shoot. Renaissance, Renaissance Art Supply in Hamilton. And um, amazing store, but they're um, closing the store because they're moving to Arizona. Um, so everything there was 40% off, like everything in the store was 40% off. And so I got a big canvas, I got some um, watercolor, and um, some things that would generally cost a lot more so I could get that big savings. Um, but this is one of the things that I found there. So this is a really big honker palette knife. Um, so it's originally $14.99. I should have kept the receipt to be able to tell you what I saved, but it doesn't matter. That's not what this is about. But I, I can't wait to use this shape. Um, but I've been using, this one actually came from um, Gaffrey's uh, website. It came with the first kit I ever got from them. And it works very, very well because it's kind of like, pardon me, got this fat shape here, but that it goes very narrow at the top. And that's really nice for like flower petals and stuff. And it's got quite a bit of, this one-handed stuff, uh, give to it, whereas something like this is very solid. It doesn't move a lot. So there's reasons for both, I think, um, when you're using it. It's almost sculpting more than just painting, and it's a real good time. I enjoy it. But I've got two other they're really big ones from their Liquitex Freestyle. So I've got this shape here, which I like a lot. I actually have three other ones, but one of them is being washed right now, but it's it's similar in shape to this one. And then I've got this sort of paddle shaped one that I can get some really big work out of that I like in a little more organic shape um, as opposed to the really pointy kind. So I love, love, love those and I've used uh, those a lot this year. Um, this big butcher tray for a palette works fantastically. But that being said, also sometimes I really like um, these paper palettes. So it's, um, the paper is got a coating on it that's very, very slick and it works really, really well as a palette for for acrylics, not so much for watercolor in my estimation. The butcher tray can work well for our watercolors. It's just kind of large for that for me. Um, but I do like to use this and sometimes I just set this down in my butcher tray and use it as a palette. So I, that is really nice too. That one's for Jack Richardson, which is kind of pricey, uh, but they have um, palette paper pads at like Michael's and United Art and Education and stuff like that that are even cheaper that you know work just as well versus then you can use that sheet of palette paper as your palette when you're done you can tear it off throw it away you've got a whole new clean palette you're not in there scraping off like I do with my butcher tray and stuff like that so that those are really really nice and those are good for kids if you have kids um, and they're painting those that palette paper is really good for that too and then you're not like looking for paper plates or whatever they've got that to work on um what else? <laughs> um, drawing pencils. My favorite have been these Blackwing Matte. I got a whole box of them because I like them a lot. I think there were, I want to say there were 12 in here. I can't remember. 12. There were 12. This is soft graphite. And I've got 
two, four, six, seven of them. New ones left at this point. They, they last a good long time, depending on how much you're sharpening. I like a sharp point if I'm gonna be sketching something, which isn't often, but I will sketch on canvas and um, I will sketch out um, ideas for watercolor. So um, they're good for that. And they're soft if you're transferring um, anything also. So um, this is the matte, so it's just matte black. Um, but they have a really, hopefully you can see, they have a really interesting eraser um, shape, which is nice if you're doing um, fine lines. And it doesn't leave a lot of um, funky stuff on your paper. So I really like those a lot. And you can get really light lines if you want, which is what I like. So I'm really happy with those. Like I said, this will last me a good long time. Got it on the wrong. So that's those. These are not cheap. <laughs> that's why I got the whole box of them because I know it'll last a really long time because if you go buy them individually, it's like, you want that for a pencil? Yeah, they're, they're outrageous. They really are. And they are collectors of them that want, you know, every single iteration and series that they have. I don't care about that. Those are my favorite ones. The, the matte black green soft are it for me. Um, what else? More paint. Um, I'm a big, big fan of the golden. Um, what is this called? High fluid something. Mm hmm high flow <laughs> the golden high flow I like this a lot because I can just straight up paint with it um, but I can also uh, put it through an airbrush I can with you know some airbrush medium I can um, use this in pouring if I'm gonna do a pouring painting I can do um, there's just a lot you can do with it because it is such a thin viscosity, but it has a lot of coverage. Also, this color is ultramarine blue. I have a whole bunch of them, and I've gone through a bunch of them. Um, I wait until there's a sale when I can get them. Um, but I love, I love, love, love these. Um, I got turned on to these through oh, 1000. Um, I took a class with uh, with 1000. I took one of his online classes, and um, learned about these um that he uses them and i fell in love with them when i got you know the colors for the class um once i started using them there's like no going back for any other <laughs> acrylic paint um and this is the golden fluid acrylics this isn't the hypo it's just fluid acrylics same thing love them love them love them um let's see oh i just got these but i'm already in love with them these are the lafranc bourgeois flash paint or flashé. I don't know if it's flash or flashé, but that's what that looks like. They're in these big glass jars. It's a ton of paint, like it's gonna last forever. Um, but it's a vinyl paint. And this color is royal blue. It's called royal blue. Um, I have, I've got three colors of this and I'm gonna be getting more because for the price you can't beat how much is in there. And also, I'm sorry if I'm wobbling you, I was leaning against the table. Um, also, um, what, what was I going to say? It being a vinyl paint, it has some very good coverage, but it, it, it um, dries very matte. And I like that a lot. If you're looking for matte acrylic paint, like this is it. It's really nice. Um, and I got that at Blick. Yeah, Blick in Columbus. Let's see. Um, I've been doing a lot of work on leather and vinyl and felt like for hats and for bags. And I have found this Angelus um, leather paint. It comes like this. I've got probably about 10 bottles, 10 different colors of this. This is the neon range. This is their black, flat black. Um, you can't beat these. They don't go anywhere once they're on there and dry. They're fantastic. I've used them on leather. I've used them on the vinyl. I've used them on um, my PVC. I've used them on the felted wool hats. I can't. I love them. I love them. Love them. Love them. Um, 
I wish they came in jars this big, actually. <laughs> They'd probably be really expensive. Um, okay, what else? Paint-wise, um, speaking of painting fabric and cloth and stuff like that, these from um, Jacquard, they're called Lumiere. And um, these are a super soft on fabric, paper and leather, also great on wood and polymer clay. So literally everything you can put these on. This is the metallic set and there is eight in here. And um, this is, like I said, the metallic set. So all of those colors have like a pearl sheen to them. Metallic is maybe a misnomer. It's more pearly, but they're beautiful. They work on, just like it said, I've not used them on anything it didn't work on. So those are really good. I also have um, a set of, I didn't bring them out, a set from Jacquard that's like bright, um, like dyes um, for fabric, and those work fantastic also. If you go through, probably probably my Instagram, I would guess, um, there's a hat that is looks tie-dyed. I used those on that hat, and they're very, very good too. Um, I would say that these are more like a paint, and those are more like a dye. Um, also, paint wise, oops, throwing stuff on the floor. These acrylic paint markers have been workhorses since I got them months and months and months and months ago. Excuse me, I put this back up here. Um, they are fantastic colors. They are uh, Mondo Llama from Target, <laughs> which um, is super cool. Like they're like in like the kids art section. Um, they're just like your standard acrylic um, paint <laughs> marker with the nib that you press down and shake up and all of that. So there you go, you can hear it. That came in how many colors? One, two, three, four, five, six. 16 colors it looks like and I would take every color ever made if they've made more like <laughs> I love them and they've got really interesting colors not just your basic I mean look at that like limey bright green love that um I, I love every color in here and like this like lilac color it's not like your standard lavender I love that those are really, really good. Check out the Mondo Llama line at Target. Like, they have a lot of really cool stuff, and it's good quality. I'm really impressed by that. I think I got some watercolor paints of theirs for my grandson years ago. That was Mondo Llama, and they were really nice, too. So, you know, they weren't expensive, anything like that. And they work on almost everything. What else? Let's see. Um... Maybe you're familiar with water brushes. So this is a water brush. Um, it's just like a plastic paintbrush that has a hollow tube and you can squeeze water out into the brush for watercolor or whatever you're using it for. What I've done and what has been wonderful, one of them spilled, sorry. Um, I have about, probably 25 of these, and I filled them with watercolor inks um, by um, Dr. Martin, Dr. P.H. Martin. So, um, like hydrous watercolors. I put those in there so I can travel with them. And uh, <laughs> I'm looking at this guy walk by the shop right now. Once a week, he goes to Subway and he parks his car directly in front of my shop every single time in the same spot every time. And he looks perturbed because my car is in that spot right now. <laughs> it's a fire lane, neither one of us should be parking there. But anyway, I knew I wasn't gonna be here long, so that's where I'm parked. And he looked like, oh my gosh, somebody's in my spot. It was so funny. <laughs> Sorry, guy, <laughs> next time parking in front of Subway. Anyway, those are those. I got ink on me. That's a good time. All right. 
Well, I think. Okay, so next, so both of those things are in the yearly favorites. The water brushes, which I don't really use a lot for actual watercolor, and the Dr. P.H. Martin's uh, watercolor inks, um, the Hydrus watercolor, both of those things in together, really, really good. Look at this, I'm a mess. <laughs> The next thing is going to be um, color pencils, which is not something I use often, but these I do because they are uh, water-soluble color pencils, so watercolor pencils. Um, these are by Karen Dash, which um, is um, probably, it's Swiss for very expensive, okay? <laughs> they are expensive. Um, I have got this red watercolor ink everywhere anyway um i have eight of them i guess maybe a couple more they're fantastic the colors are great they um you can put water to them and they don't necessarily leave ghosting on your paper um unless you're really pressing down hard or anything like that they are so good as just a colored pencil but as a watercolor pencil they are phenomenal and worth the price but I'm not willing to pull the trigger on a full set of these I just get them open stock the ones I really know I'm gonna use and those are fantastic for travel like really good for travel um, like that and like a water brush can't beat it um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is cyanotype this is another jacquard product that I got obsessed with this year so this is like a two part Dealy, um, it all they also have like um fabric that's pre printed with the cyanotype solution, but essentially you're doing like sun paintings, so you put objects on the sheet that's treated and um, put it out in the sun, and it develops a shadow of what you have on top of it you see there i got like an x-ray deal some butterflies what else do i have some flowers and i've done several of these prints and framed them and then i've got some on wood that i painted on wood and used and it's i really think there's a lot that can be done with that and i got sidetracked so i couldn't do as much as I wanted to, but I still have the solution here so I can do it when I want. Um, I'm wondering if that'll come off. <laughs> uh, so that's something that you can find at like art art supply stores. Like, uh, I don't know that I've ever seen anything like that at Michael's, but they do have it at United Art and Education. And I believe they have it at Blick as well. And I'm sure you can find it online, but look, Jacquard cyanotype. This would be a really fun activity to do with kids in the summer, stuff like that. I also have a mural sized sheet of this treated fabric that I wanted to do um, something very cool with this year and I still have not gotten to do it. So that is gonna be on the docket for next year and I'm gonna need help from other people with that one. So that'll be fun. That is a upcoming thing um maybe in the spring that'll be cool um but you can't let the sun uh, any light really hit it until you're ready to use it because it like right then it's going to show everything that ever touched it so it's very very cool um if you're interested in it i would suggest watch some um, videos on youtube about it there's some people doing amazing stuff with cyanotype i mean i'm doing basic basic they're like full artist using this like like that's their whole media okay let's talk about brushes since I'm holding them um, first thing is this brush holder this actually came from a nail show um, I went to a cosmetology show years ago and picked this up um, it's meant for nail brushes but I'm using it for art supply brushes uh, art brushes and you kind of it just folds over I'm trying to get a hold of it here folds over like this and you can lock it in place and it sits on your table 
so your brushes are out there to be seen and used so you can see what you've got ready to go and I use this for travel constantly I use it here at the shop as well um, and a couple of my favorite brushes are in here well all of my travel brushes are in here um, but what is it called this little angle brush is from Princeton and angular shader quarter inch Hopefully you can see, there we go, the angle, love that, and I've got a, a square one that is like that as well, and then, here we go, my favorite, favorite brushes of all time are these Escoda Prado Synthetico, these are from Barcelona, that's from Barcelona, um, both of them are Escoda Prado, Escoda Prados. Um, I have a number four and a number 10 here right now. I also have a six and I'm not sure where that is at the moment. That's a little frightening. But anyway, I'll find my six. But that's the Escoda Prados. They are the most comfortable. They hold the water you want them to hold. You can tell I've been using these for a long time. They hold up. Um, wouldn't be mad if I got some replacements there, but I just keep using them, keep using them, keep using them. Um, this one is a little too long to fit into my case. Um, so I generally don't travel with, I don't generally travel with brushes that big anyway. Um, another gigantic, and I'm talking about the size of the brush, the actual hairs. Um, that I don't really travel with, um, I could because it would fit in this case, but it's just too big to work with on the smaller papers I'm using for travel. Um, this is the Princeton, Princeton Aqua Elite number 12. Covers a lot of space, holds a lot of water, comes to a good point, also seen a lot of love. Love it. And this one's got this like textured handle that's really easy to keep a hold of. Um, and yeah, I mean, those are... You can see all of my favorite travel brushes are in here, except for my number six, the Skoda, is MIA at the moment, but I will find it. <clears throat> I'll scramble for it the next time we travel somewhere and I can actually paint again. Um, now, this is a newer favorite. At least the cover is a newer favorite. Uh, <laughs> this big metal tin is actually meant to be a gel plate storage tin. Hopefully you can see what that label says. But I saw it at the local like stationery, like Marco's paper. Um, it was like, you know what? I bet, <laughs> I bet I could fit a lot of little watercolor um, pans in there. And the fact of the matter is I can. And what I've done is I have put magnets on the back of every single one of these pants. I'm gonna try to get close enough for you to see. My arm is not really cooperating. Here we go. All of these have magnets on the back to stick them to that tin. But there's a bajillion of them in here. So what that did was, this is, I do not travel with this. This, <laughs> this stays in studio. And as a studio palette, it's amazing because it's almost, almost everything I have that's not in this palette you saw previously is in here. And I can see everything all at once. It's thin, it's, you know, it takes up a lot of table space, but I think that's a fair trade-off rather than a stack of tens, you know? that are falling all over themselves. So I've got a bunch of tins that I'd emptied and put in here, but I still have those because if I want to travel with a small tin, I've got them ready to go. I've got plenty of tins that I can fill up with whatever I move on about my way. There is, there, there are so many brands in here <laughs> that I couldn't even tell you what each one is sitting here in this video and it would take forever, but 
needless to say, there is some, what am I going to call them? Uh, art philosophy in here. There's some Jane Davenport in here. There is some White Knights. There's some Gonzai Tambi. There's, um, oh, what is the name of the, um, oh, well, anyway, Daniel Smith. There's some, uh, I know we even got some gouache in here, and it's like a Windsor Newton or something gouache. Uh, there's some homemade um, watercolor in here by me, and then there's some handmade watercolor that was gifted to me in here. There is, uh, you name it, there's just random watercolor that I've you know gotten different places, but if it's in a pan, I've kind of put it in here. And I love it. I've been working out of it and it's been great. I haven't worked out of it for a long time yet, but every paint in here I've worked with for quite a while and I love. So they're all favorites and the tin itself is a favorite. So that is Studio Pans. Now just to give me one second, I'm going to grab a couple of my favorite colors to show you in paints. Um, let's see. grab too many but these are some of the watercolors I am really I've enjoyed this year one of my favorites is the core green gold and it's beautiful it's absolutely a beautiful literally green gold like the one you really want it to be almost bright but moody like really really good um, sticking with green. This is the um, Sennelier Thalo Green Light. And it is, this is what the tube looks like. I don't have a lot of Sennelier because it's expensive. Can't get it open. <laughs> well, I can't show you the shade, but essentially it's about the middle of that label, what that color looks like. So bright and beautiful and good to mix, I think, anyway. Um, Daniel Smith, I have Wisteria here. I adore this and I adore mixing with it. And uh, Holbein is one of my newest loves. I'm steadily collecting Holbein watercolor. I It might be my very favorite. And I was a Daniel Smith girl big time, but Holbein is something else. Like, it's really, really cool. So this brilliant pink, I love this color. Much, much brighter, bubblegummy than that um, wisteria, for sure. Um, and this one, shell pink, which is almost, almost a neutral for me because being such a, a bright, colorful girl, but it's stunning, and you can do so much with it. All of these I like for that reason because you can do so much with it except maybe the brilliant pink. The brilliant pink is just so pretty to look at. Um, and then as far as acrylics, these guys I've really been loving. Really, really thought I'd throw them around. Um, this is a brand called Atelier. And I found these and I love them. First of all, their light fastness is huge on their label <laughs> right there. But um, this is uh, phthalo green here, which phthalo green has been very big for me this year. I love, 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 love green. But these tubes are uh, relatively inexpensive. There's like a good amount in them. They are so much better coverage and they're so much better in general than like uh, Liquitex or something like that. Um, and this one is phthalo blue. And I love both of them very much, along with those golden fluid paints being favorites. Um, let's see. Is there anything else here? 
I'm sure there's many things I've missed <laughs> in my favorites for the year. And if I get enough of them together, I'll do a second part of this. Oh, um, anything that requires a glitter of any kind or a sparkle of any kind, I tend to reach for um, metal flake that is made for car paint. And I have quite a few colors. I've just picked like three of my favorite that I can use for almost anything. If I'm just trying to add some sparkle to something. Um, so this one is Roth Metal Flake um, by Little Daddy Roth. And um, this one is called Cloud Nine. And you can see it's got that kind of like offset blue to it. Beautiful and super duper fine. This one, you can see I've used almost all of it up, um, is from um, Paint Huffer Metal Flake. And um, this one's called Blow, which I just think is funny. Um, this is a joke too, guys, like calm down. It's not that big of a deal. But it also has that like blue reflect, but it's a little chunkier. And I've used this for, honest to God, I use these for painting. I use these, um, in nails, I <laughs> use them, arts, crafts, everything, everything, in resin, everything. And it, you just get such a good amount of it for the price and they're they're wonderful. This one is a fairly new one from Roth Metal Flake. Um, Trippin, this is a Trippin Speedball. That's what this is called. <laughs> Again, they're just being clever with the colors, like don't get all worked up or anything. But this is a holographic metal flake. And it's metal glitter, which is um, means, especially if I'm using it in nails and resin or something, it's not going to melt down like a polyester glitter would. Um, sometimes that it's preferable to have polyester, but um, these are actual metal flakes. And I love them. Very old school, wonderful, great. Ah, the last thing. I head down here. This big bad guy here. I have two of these left, I think. I think I got three. I had two of these. This one's about half done. Um, of Strathmore watercolor paper cold press. I really only like cold press watercolor paper. I know a lot of people are straight up hot press. I like the rough texture. Um, this one is, it's got 12 sheets in the um, pad these are 18 inches by 24 inches so they're big you know and I love that because not only can I create a big piece which is what I love to do I can also break those pages down into smaller pieces if I want to and um, then get really economical with this paper um, this isn't like the best paper I'm ever going to use but it's great for um, if I'm trying to work something out, figure out how something's gonna work, if I'm testing colors, if I wanna make a poster size something, it's it's not too bad that way. Um, it's 140 pounds, so 300 GSM. Um, it's a good thickness and, you know, your standard thickness. It takes the water. Um, it's obviously, it's not in a block form, but um, the size just makes it really fun to work work on um also i have a a sketch pad that's this size um by strathmore also um it's actually at home but it's the same size and what it's great for is um if i'm working on a hat and i'm gonna show you an example if i'm working on a hat say and i'm trying to decide what i want to paint on that hat around the brim or whatever anywhere on the brim on the inside or out um, I can lay that hat down on that um, sketch pad and trace out the size of that hat so that I know that the art that I'm creating for that pattern is going to fit the brim of this hat so I've been using that one that I have at home for that um, before I had my injury anyway um, and that worked perfectly. So those really big sketchbooks and watercolor paper pads are fantastic. I love them. And I'll be repurchasing those indefinitely, I'm sure. 
as soon as I can <laughs> work again, paint again. Um, so yeah, that's it for the favorites for now. Um, as far as um, health update, uh, if you're still watching, uh, this morning I had my follow-up appointment with the physiatrist. Um, he did the follow-up of the MRI and the um, nerve test. And uh, what he is doing is referring me to a um, neurosurgeon who is going to decide um, if I should be getting an uh, epidural um, and, uh, uh, and or uh, surgery. Um, I have spinal stenosis, which is a narrowing of um, the spine, the bones around the spine. Um, I am not a professional. I'm not a doctor, so I can't explain precisely, but that's my understanding of it. I'm going to go home now in a few minutes and do a little research. Um, honestly, at this point, I prefer just to have the surgery and be done with it because my questions to the doctor was essentially what's going to give me my grip strength back as soon as possible. I can I can work in some pain, but I, not, I can't work if I can't hold on to anything and I have no way of being precise, you know, um, and that goes for painting as well as nails like I can't just be cutting people up because I can't um, figure out how hard I'm holding on to the drill their hand or anything else um, and I can't have my hand jumping around and trying to polish nails like it, that's just not gonna work I'm a little broken hearted at the moment I'm trying to be cool I'm trying to be real real cool um, because his answer was it should help <laughs> There was no definite anything like we you know it's been known to help get grip back like that's not what i was expecting to hear i was expecting to hear like yeah that's the fix you know um but i have high hopes and um at this moment i will do either whatever the neurosurgeon thinks is best it seems to me that eventually it'll be going it's going to be a surgery situation but maybe not yet you know <laughs> maybe the epidural will be it and I'll be you know it'll be great for a good long time I don't know and I there's no way to know until we talk to the neurosurgeon um, so it's just waiting again um, I do not have that appointment yet I'm waiting for the call from the neurosurgeon for the appointment I'm supposed to hear from them um, by Thursday today is Monday um, but I'll be putting all that information out on my social media for all my clients to see as well I wish you were in here getting your nails done too. <laughs> I wish I was doing more painting. I wish I was doing everything. It's a little scary right now. I look around me and I realize how lucky I am to have what I have and to be able to do what I do. And so suddenly not to be able to do it is difficult. And um, I worry a bit. Um, I mean, my business isn't going under or anything. Um, there may be decisions coming up one day where I have to make some decisions about my business, but for now, um, I'm just doing the best that I can do and trying to stay positive and I won't know anything until I know anything, so I'm not trying to project. Um, I just really had wished that I had heard, you know, news of, yeah, this is how we fix that, and then you'll be fixed, and everything will be fine forever. <laughs> Which I knew better, but it is what it is. Um, as of right now, I'm not in a lot of pain, um, and that's good, and I'll take it. So I will talk to you guys later if I come up with some more end of year stuff, or if I have, you know, something fun to do on video. I'll do it. I'm trying to do more YouTube videos to keep myself busy, also. Um, so um, yeah, and keep an eye on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of that, and I'll be posting soon. See you guys later. Bye.